بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشراف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إخوت الإسلام يا عباد الله uh, I was recently on a podcast with our brother Abu Abdul Malik Abdul Haq from Deen and Cut and during that podcast he asked me about uh, the the teachers that uh, had a profound impact on me as it relates to uh, Dawah and, and shaping my outlook on things and after that particular podcast was over I uh, reflected off that question more because although there was a person uh, our Sheikh Farid Abdullah our elder our Sheikh Farid Abdullah who I believe was a person that had the most impact on me in terms of Dawa and my outlook on uh, varying uh, things uh, that doesn't mean that there were that there were there were there wasn't impactful uh, encounters that I had while overseas with the Mashiach. And so I wanted to just mention an impactful uh, encounter with one of the uh, the people of knowledge that I came across. I wasn't a student of this particular person. Actually, uh, when I went to visit him at one point, at one time, the sitting or the visit was very impactful. And the person that I went to visit, this was in the early 2000s, it would have had to have been in 2002. Uh, I visited a scholar by the name of Fali al-Harbi. Now, Fali al-Harbi, disclaimer, Fali al-Harbi at this point is a man that is warned against due to his uh, ghulu uh, as it relates to criticism of scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, criticizing scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, warning against scholars of Ahlul Sunnah and providing no tangible and legitimate proof to substantiate the criticisms and the warnings. So I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm putting forth that disclaimer immediately. So this isn't an endorsement of Fali al-Harbi. However, at this time, at the time that I went to visit him, this was at a time where some of the major scholars uh, were uh, encouraging people to benefit from him. This was prior to uh, his uh, reality becoming uh, apparent to the ulama and then and them warning against him publicly. At any rate, like I said, this had to be in, had to have been in two thousand two. I, I was with a group of students in Medina and we went to visit him particularly and so we met him at his house and if anybody knows uh, Saudi Arabia usually the homes they have you have like the regular house and then there's usually a, a sub structure on the property that the men are referred to as a majlis, the men usually host their guests within this substructure uh, on the property. And so when we entered into his yard, of course we didn't go into the main house, we went into the substructure. And so when, when I, when me and the other brothers that were with me, when we entered this, uh, this, this particular area, I found that there were bookshelves covering the walls and books from the floor to the ceiling. These were the bookshelves that were against the wall. Then you had uh, uh, other bookshelves that weren't against the wall, standing bookshelves. All of these bookshelves were filled with books. All of them were filled with books. Then you had books that were stacked one on top of each other on, on, on uh, all throughout the majlis. 
And you even had some books that look, where it looked like he was reading and maybe he didn't finish uh, what he was looking at. So they were turned upside down, uh, facing down on the floor as if uh, he wanted to uh, go back to, to that particular book and continue reading whatever it was he was reading. So there were a lot of books, bottom line, there were a lot of books in that, in, in that room. So back then, you know, I was, uh, I, I, I do believe I was a little naive back then, but as far as I'm concerned, I was in my early 20s. But as far as I was concerned, even back then, I had the understanding there is no such thing as a stupid question. And so I asked the Sheikh, yeah, Sheikh, hello, Korate, have the Kutub Kulleha? Uh, I'm not sure if I worded the question like that back then. I honestly don't remember how I worded the question, but I asked him, uh, uh, did you read all of these books? And he responded, he looked at me, he responded, he said, no, I haven't read all of these books. Some of these books I keep or I, uh, I, I obtain for the purposes of research. Now, keep in mind, when he answered my question, I understood it, what, what he meant. I understood what he meant. So one of the students uh, who attended the university, the Islamic University in Medina, he had a question. Now it's been, like I said, this was 2001, so I don't exactly remember what the question was. It was you know, quite some time ago. We're in 2021, that was like 2002, so that was like 19, 20 years ago. At any rate, whatever the question was, it caused uh, the Sheikh to send him to a particular section within his library to get a specific book. And then he had the student read from a, a specific chapter within that book. And as the student was reading, then you come across some evidence. You know, there's an ayah. So he stops him right there and he sends him to the tafsir section to grab a particular book of tafsir. When he sent him to the tafsir section, he looked at me, smiled, and he said, now do you see why I have all these books? So when the brother comes back and he starts reading the tafsir, and of course, um, uh, a tafsir, they're going, they're, they're, going, they're going to quote some ahadith after explaining so uh, the, 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 the interpretation, some ayat may have more than one interpretation. And like in, in the case of Ibn Kathir and uh, Fatul Qadir by Imam al-Shawkani, thereafter you, they start bringing narrations that support uh, the particular uh, interpretations that are found for the ayat. And so as the student is reading, the Sheikh stops him and he sends him to another section in his library to get another specific book. When the student stands up and walks off to go get the book, he looked at me and he said, now you see why I have all these books. And he says this smiling. And this happened uh, maybe two, two more times after that where the sheikh, where the student would come back, he would read something, then he would send the student to another section. And as the student gets up to walk off, he looks at me smiling. Now you see why I have all these books. Now that particular sitting or visit impacted me because before that, prior to that, I was a penny pension when it came to buying books. I would go into the bookstores, especially when I was in Egypt, I would go into the bookstores. If anybody knows anything about Egypt, and has been in Egypt, the books are very, very, very accessible for very low prices. Voluminous works are very accessible for very low prices. But I was in, I, I used to be back then, you know, kind of a penny pension uh, with, with books. And uh, not, I don't want to say I didn't see the importance of the books. But I said to myself, you know, I don't need that right now. And I would, you know, kind of penny pinch. At any rate, after that sitting, it gave me a different outlook on collecting books. 
And it was for that purpose that you you don't know when you would need that book from, from a perspective of research. And when that comes about, if you so uh, so happen to need a book, you have it in your possession, literally in arm's reach to be able to go to it and research and look up whatever matter it is that you're looking into. And from that point on, I started collecting books. When I was in Yemen, I collected a lot of books. Unfortunately, my library uh, that I had in Yemen is still in Yemen, but I started collecting books especially when I was there because I was doing more research. And I found that the books that I was buying in Yemen, they still weren't sufficient because I would find myself going to the to Mashir al-Sharqin. I would find myself going to its library to look up Masail that I was trying to find uh, answers to that I couldn't find from the books that I had with me. Uh, because, you know, I was limited. I had a limited number of books. So anyway, it impacted me in that regard. It showed me the importance of collecting books and having them around. At, so uh, so at, when, when you need them, if you're doing research on the matter and thus for for so on, you have these books with you in arm's length. And, and, and some of these books uh, are vital for a person who's a researcher. I want to take a look, uh, or I want to show some of the brothers some books that I have with me, and some of them are very voluminous. That that they're they're numerous in volumes. Like if I was to go to, and this is these are just examples. If we were to go to the Shuruhat of the collectors of Hadith, then we have. Uh, we have Aun al Ma'bud, Bishar Sunan Abi Dawood. And this particular book alone, or this particular print I have, is about eight or nine volumes. Then we have the Sharh to Sahih Muslim by Imam al Nawawi. This, this particular print is nine volumes. This is something that is needed within a person's library. Now, before I continue, I haven't read all of the, both of these books from cover to cover and all of the, the volumes that are found within them. No, but they're around for research. And as you can see from the, the, the paper that I stuck in here to go back to a mess LN like this, these books are in use. These books are in use. And they are vital when dealing with research. Another book that I have which is uh, 13 volumes, is Fat al-Bari, which is the Shah to Sahih al-Bukhari. This is also vital to understand the statements of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have here Jamia Turath al-Allama al-Albani fil Minhaj wal Ahdath al-Kubra. And this is a compilation of Statements of Sheikh Al Albani as it relates to matters of minhaj, and this is twelve volumes. And in fact, this is a book that I just recently purchased, and I've been doing some reading as it relates to some of the masail that are in it. Uh, and that's more or less—I don't want to say recreational reading, but it's not there for. Uh, I, I, I read the. Uh, some of the masail or some of the questions and answers of the sheikh, some of the fatawa of the sheikh, on uh, uh, yani outside of researching a particular topic. That's what. So I don't know if, for lack of better expressions, recreational reading. I don't know if that would be correct or not. But uh, no, nah, that's that's what I've been doing with that book. Then we have another one that's recent as well. Jamia Turath al Allama al Albani fil Fiqh. And this is 18 volumes. This is 18 volumes. So this and the other one on Minhaj are, are new to my library. They're new to my library. I just, you know, obtain those. Then, of course, if we go to the section of Fiqh, we have Al-Mughni by Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi. And this particular print is eight volumes. Likewise, I have Al-Mahalla by Ibn Hazm. And this particular print is 11 volumes. 
We have Nail al Autar uh, of Imam al Shawkani, and this particular print is nine volumes. And then, of course, the, uh, there is the Shah to Bulugh al Maram, and this shot is by a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Saleh al Uthaymin, and this is six volumes. So, the point that I'm making, uh, because these are uh, I, I, I just give, gave an example of Shuruhat as it relates to the collectors of Hadith, the, the explanations to some of the books, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, some books from my section of Fiqh. Uh, we have Yani Siyar Alam and Nubala, and this print is 28 volumes long. And the reason why I'm presenting this is to show, to give some type of illustration that uh, one, the books that, that, that are collected are needed for research. And some of these books are volumes long. So by default, I haven't read all of them from beginning to end. But like I said, that visit from uh, th th that I had with Fali al-Harbi showed me the importance of collecting uh, books for this purpose. And this is something that I have done ever since. And I will say in one way or another, all of the books that I have on my shelves, I've benefited from in some way or another, even if it was just me opening up one book at one time, reading a few paragraphs, closing it, and may not have necessarily went back to it immediately because I was dealing with other things as it relates to uh, the Messiah that, that I may have been researching and thus forth and so on. So at any rate, that's how that particular uh, visit impacted me. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, illustrate that and hopefully it'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a cause for clarity uh, as it relates to this message for some of the brothers that are involved with seeking knowledge and Allah to baraka wa ta'ala knows best. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.